grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm glad to be with you, even if in this, this virtual sense, as we place our in-person person worshiping kind of in suspension for a little while in order for the rate of infection around us to slow down and to avoid putting one another at risk. I would much rather be with you in person, but even more than being with you in person, I desire your safety. So in order to do the best we can to promote that, your safety, uh, we will continue to meet in this, this virtual sense, at least for a while. And I will rotate my video recording from, from church to church in the parish in order to, to be with you at least a little bit closer. And as part of that, I'm, I'm coming to you today from the United Methodist Church of Rolla. But please know this, always know this, that no matter how far apart we might be in, in physical distance, you are now and you always will be held close in my heart. So with that reality in mind, I invite you to join me in our opening prayer for this first Sunday of Advent. It's one that uh, the Book of Common Prayer has for the first collect of Advent. Will you pray with me? Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Now in this, the time of this mortal life in which your son Jesus Christ came to visit us, in great humility, that in the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I invite you to hear the word of our Lord through the scripture text that the lection has selected for this first Sunday of Advent, the first one being our Old Testament lesson from Isaiah, the 64th chapter, verses 1 through 9. If only you would tear open the heavens and come down. Mountains would quake before you like fire igniting brushwood or making water boil. If you would make your name known to your enemies, the nations would tremble in your presence. When you accomplished wonders beyond all our expectations, when you came down, the mountains quaked before you. From ancient times, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God but you who acts on behalf of those who wait for him. You look after those who gladly do right. They will praise you for your ways. But you were angry when we sinned. You hid yourself when we did wrong. We have all become like the unclean. All our righteous deeds are like a minstrel rag. All of us wither like a leaf. Our sins like the wind carry us away. No one calls on your name. No one bothers to hold on to you, for you have hidden yourself from us and have handed us over to our sin. But now, Lord, you are our father. We are the clay. You are our potter. All of us are the work of your hand. Don't rage so fiercely, Lord. Don't hold our sins against us forever. But now gaze on your people, all of us. Our New Testament letter today, or lesson, excuse me, comes from Paul's first letter to the, the Corinthians. The first chapter, verses three through nine, is as the apostle speaking to the people of God which includes you and me, has these words. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God always for you because of God's grace that was given to you in Christ Jesus. That is, you were made rich through him in everything, in all your communication and every kind of knowledge, in the same way that the testimony about Christ was confirmed with you. The result is that you aren't missing any spiritual gift while you wait for our Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed. He will also confirm your testimony about Christ 
until the end so that you will be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, and you were called by him to partnership with his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And now, I invite you to hear the good news from the Gospel of Mark. 13th chapter, verses 24 through 37. As Jesus, speaking to the people of God, says, In those days, after the suffering of that time, the sun will become dark, the moon won't give its light, the stars will fall from the skies, and the planets and other heavenly bodies will be shaken. Then they will see the human one coming in, in the clouds with great power and splendor. Then he will send the angels and gather together his chosen people from the four corners of the earth, from the end of the earth to the end of heaven. Learn this parable from the fig tree. After its branch becomes tender and it sprouts new leaves, you know that summer is near. In the same way, when you see these things coming, you know that he's near at the door. I assure you that this generation won't pass away until these things happen. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will certainly not pass away. But nobody knows when that day or hour will come. Not the angels in heaven, not the Son, only the Father knows. Watch out! Stay alert! You don't know when the time is coming. It is as if someone took a trip left the household behind, and put the servants in charge, giving each one a job to do, and told the doorkeeper to stay alert. Therefore, stay alert. You don't know when the head of the household will come, whether in the evening or at midnight, or when the rooster crows in the early morning or at daybreak. Don't let him show up when you weren't expecting and find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to all. Stay alert. This is the word of God for the people of God. Will you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. A watched pot never boils. Have you ever heard that old adage before? I, th I should think that a lot of us have heard or, or maybe even used it from time to time. And basically what it means is that the passage of time, oh, it can just seem to slow to a standstill in the face of our anxiously waiting for something. And in fact, the more that we yearn from so for something to happen, seems like this lower that time can seem to be passing before this much longed for event does happen. And you know, there's, there's a lot of truth to that adage. There is. Even now, in the midst of this COVID-19 pandemic that has brought so much heartache and, and, and uncertainty to so many, and as we anxiously await the final you know, outcomes of all these elections and all this turmoil among so many other anxiety, causing things in our, our lives, time, time can seem to have ground to a halt. Can. We want for life to be the way that we want for it to be. We want peace. We want security. We want for the chaos to stop. And we want what we want and we want for it to happen right now. We do. Because the truth is that waiting is hard. Waiting is at the same time tedious and uncomfortable. Waiting is not fun. Because waiting forces us to really acknowledge the uncomfortable truth that we are not the boss of all things. We're not. We can't control things to the extent that we want. And, we, and when we have to acknowledge the truth that we're not in control, well, that understanding leaves us 
feeling vulnerable, you and I. We don't like to feel vulnerable. It's not fun. It's not fun at all. And yet, here we are, waiting again. Waiting. Waiting at our dislike of it is a, is a good thing for us to consider today because today, as I mentioned earlier, it's the first Sunday of Advent. It's the start of our, our Christian year. Advent. Advent's a, a season of four weeks, including the Sundays, and it gets its name, Advent, from the Latin word Adventus, which means coming. So this Advent season really proclaims the comings of the Christ. The anointed one of God, whose, whose birth we're, we're prepared to celebrate on Christmas Day. Um, the anointed one of God, Christ, who, who comes to us continually in word and spirit and whose return and final victory you and I are eagerly anticipating. We're, we're eagerly waiting for that. So it's Advent. And, and each Sunday in this Advent season has its own themes and, and the texts that are, are selected by the, the lectionary, I'll touch on that theme for each and every Sunday. And on this first Sunday, well, the texts all look toward our Lord's return and final victory. And then on the second and third Sundays, the, the texts will look at the proclamations of John the Baptist. And then finally on that fourth Sunday, we're going to look at the events that are immediately preceding the birth of Christ. But essentially, the Advent season calls the community of faith, which, of which you and I are part, calls us to wait and to prepare for these comings of the Christ. And even as we endure the, the, the discomfort, the tedium of, of waiting, there are some things that we can and we should do. You know, as I mentioned earlier, waiting forces us to acknowledge the uncomfortable truth that, that we're not in charge. And it does leave us feeling really very vulnerable. And this is nothing new. Listen, those, those feelings of, of vulnerability are part of, of our human, human condition. And we see that evidenced in the words from Isaiah that we, we read a few moments ago. Remember what he said? He says, all of us wither like a leaf. Our sins, like the wind, carry us away. The people felt utterly powerless. And they cried out to God in their despair. But even their, their cries of pain, as, as difficult as they are for us to hear, they have value. They are actually a recognition of something important. Their cries to God are in reality a statement of their faith that there really is a God who's going to hear those cries and who will actually do something to alleviate the distress of his people. Lord, you are our Father, Isaiah says. We are the clay. You are our potter. Lord, you are our Father. Even in their distress, the people of God were aligning themselves with God with the vital understanding that God can and God will act favorably on behalf of God's people. Well, as you and I wait, knowing that, that, that we are not in charge, we can know and we really can celebrate that there is one who is in charge. In our scripture text today, we are reminded that the one who is in charge, our, our, and all, our, our, our gracious and almighty God, that one has not abandoned us. Not, all, not at all, not even close. He's still with us. In his letter to the Corinthians, the Apostle Paul, speaking to the people of God, and again, that includes you and me, he says, you aren't missing any spiritual gift while you wait for our Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed. He will also confirm your testimony about Christ until the end so that you will be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. We need to realize that these aren't idle words. They actually illuminate important truths. The first of those that we're going to touch on today is that God is actively at work in our world. And he's active, actively at work in us 
while we are waiting for the fulfillment of God's kingdom. Paul tells us that. He tells us you aren't missing any spiritual gift. Through God's indwelling presence, through the Holy Spirit, we are given gifts that help us while we wait. But that's not all. God, or Paul, excuse me, also reminds us of the forgiveness of our sins by the grace of God. You remember what he said? He said, you will be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. And realize how he tells us these things. Both our, our blameless state as well as the return of Jesus Christ are presented to us as certainties. They're a done deal. It's going to happen. In our gospel lesson today, we, we hear Jesus speak of a time when we will see the human one, that means Jesus Christ, coming in the clouds with great power and splendor. Then he will send the angels and gather together his chosen people from the four corners of the earth, from the end of the earth to the end of heaven. And again, notice how this is phrased, because this is important. Jesus doesn't speak of if his return might come, but rather he tells us of when it will come. We don't know when, when all of this stuff is going to happen, but we can be assured that it will happen. And when it happens, when it happens, Jesus tells us that his chosen people will be gathered up with him. Be gathered up with him, his chosen people. We need to remember who those chosen people are, because that's important. In John's gospel account, we can encounter these words from Jesus, who says, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me will live even though they die. Everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Everyone. Everyone who comes to Jesus in faith is going to get to be with him forever, forever. That's important. Because even as we wait, which, which is hard, we need to remember that even though we're not in charge, you and I, the one who is in charge, in, in charge who is our almighty and eternal God, that one loves each and every single one of us with a matchless intensity. And he will carry us through these uncertain times and he will deliver us, each of us, all of us, to a new life at his side where we can and where we will dwell in perfect peace for all of the days that are to come. There is no force now, nor will there be in the days that are to come that can keep God from fulfilling his promises to us. So you see, my brothers and sisters, our glorious and unending future is assured. So we can stop worrying about that. We can. We don't have to worry about that. We don't have to fret. You know, doing during my, my three score and four years on this planet, I have managed to learn a few things. And among those things that I've learned is this simple and yet valuable truth. And, and that simply is that time passes more quickly when you're busy. So let's do that while we wait. Let's get busy. Even as we wait, let's use this time wisely. Let each of us pass the time by sharing God's love in the world around us with the people that surround us in all of the ways that we can as often as, as we can. Time passes more quickly when you're busy. So stop watching the pot and waiting for it to boil. There's a better alternative available. Get busy loving the people around you and know that God will take care of the rest. Praise be to God. Amen. Will you pray with me? Everlasting, almighty, trustworthy God, we, your children, come to you on this, this first Sunday of Advent, confessing our fears, our sins, our impatience, 
as well as our great need for you and your assurance in our lives. In the midst of all of the turmoil that continually swirls around us, the pandemics, the economic concerns, and so much more, we find it difficulty, difficult to see beyond that which concerns us, which does hinder our ability to take note of that which can, can, which can console and inspire us. Forgive our short-sighted insecurities and our impatience. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us to, to help us to see that which you would have us to do in this present age, as well as that which you have prepared for our future, so that we may take solace in you and also take our part in your ongoing redemptive work in our world. Heavenly Father, we pray for, for comfort, for healing and strength, for all of those who are suffering from illness or injury or from the loss of a loved one. We pray for help to speed to all who are suffering economic struggles due to the pandemic, and we earnestly pray for the safety and well-being of all of the healthcare workers who are so stressed, working so hard. Be with them, O oh God. Give them the strength that they need. All of this we bring to you today. In the name of our risen and living Savior, Jesus Christ, whose victorious return we eagerly await, and who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now, my brothers and sisters, as we prepare to end this virtual time together so that we may, may go forth to get busy out in the world around us, I invite you to join me in the prayer that we, we close every worship service in the parish that I serve with when, we were, when we're able to join in person. We can't do that now, but we can join in prayer. So will you pray with me? It's our prayer for going forth. Creator, Redeemer God, be with me as I go out into the world. Open my eyes and my heart to the opportunities that you provide for me to serve you and to love my neighbors. Daily give me the wisdom and courage that I need to be an effective servant. In Jesus' name, amen. And now, my brothers and sisters, may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.